Hey everybody! Today we're going to discuss February favorites. I don't normally film favorites videos, but I wanted to try it out and see if it is something that would be for me. So a few things, let's start with makeup and then move on to skincare because makeup is more fun. <laughs> um, first and foremost, this duo had been with me the entire month. You can see that there is some significant use even, well, on both of these products, but um, Today I'm going to talk about this uh, Ready Set Gorgeous by CoverGirl. Uh, I have it in 115, slightly, slightly darker than I need. 110 is a little bit of a weird undertone for me, so 115 actually fits my undertone the best. It's uh, called it's called Buff Beige. This product is actually one of the few drugstore favorites that I do have, and um, I do occasionally try bases from from drugstore, but Really, it's very difficult for me to like uh, bases from dress, drugstore because I've, I've been using high-end for quite a while, so my standards are very high, and this foundation really reaches the high standards that I that I set for my base products. So, um, it, the longevity on this is quite good. Um, I do have dry skin, and I have to prep and moisturize quite well to avoid dry patches or weird sliding, but this foundation does give me nice medium coverage. Uh, if you try to build it up, it, it will be a bit cakey, but you can build it if you really want to. It won't look like skin though. Um, it looks like kind of like skin on medium coverage. It reminds me of Estee Lauder Double Wear, but sort of a very light version of that foundation. I have and love that foundation and I use it for days when I need to look absolutely flawless for long periods of time. Um, CoverGirl Ready Said Gorgeous will give you that too. It'll keep you looking very nice for pretty long periods of time. Um, for my dry skin, I really like mixing it with Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector, mine is in Moonstone. And I'm trying to use this up in my project pan. I have to say that uh, this is a really beautiful mixer with this foundation. Together, they look fantastic on skin. They create a sort of a satin skin-like finish without um, the illuminator. I would say this is a little too matte for me now, but in the summertime, I think it'll be wonderful without the illuminator as well. So very good quality product from drugstore. Yes, it doesn't have any SPF. It doesn't have any extras in terms of skincare. All of those things you should expect in higher end brands, but for a very basic, just medium coverage, light to medium coverage foundation, this one is really nice. Uh, surprisingly nice for the price. It's under 10 bucks, I think. Next, we have this guy, also in favorites, partly because it's now in my Project 10 pen, sort of use it up, makeup use up uh, effort that I have uh, been going with for the past couple months. And this one, I forgot about how, how, how nice it is until I ran out of a bronzer and included this one in my Project pan. This is Chanel's Soletin de Chanel, and it's the Makeup Bronzing Base, Bronze Universal. I have to say that this product is actually quite nice. Um, on first glance, it's orange. And yes, it is actually orange uh, undertoned, but since it's Makeup Bronzing Base, the best way for a pale girl to wear it is wearing it under your makeup. It'll give you a bit of this sun-kissed glow without appearing too obvious on the skin. However, I also use it in a light layer as a cream bronzer, and you can see I am applying most things with Beauty Blender and it's, it has this bronzer on it. That's what I did today. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very thin layer, so I guess you probably won't be noticing, but this makeup has been on for about 12 hours at this point, so the wear time is very, very decent. Um, for both the bronzer and the foundation that I had mentioned. So this one is very easy to blend, distributes on the skin seamlessly, does not uh, catch on anything, glides over the skin very nicely, the texture they got right. I would like to see this bronzing base in, in multiple colors because I don't think it's universally flattering. They say it's universal, but come on. Uh, it'll work maybe from fair to medium skin tone. Anywhere darker than that, I think that um, isn't, it's not going to be useful. It's just basically not going to show up. So I do believe that Chanel need to improve their range of colors for that. Next, we have a couple of lip products. So 
I have been obsessing over my old favorite. This is my second pencil in this particular color. This is Narciss Rakugian, and it is this uh, sharpenable lip pencil. I have been really liking lip pencils. Um, and this color initially came, I think, in some kind of a gift with purchase from Sephora, like maybe Point Perk. Um, and I tried the color and I loved it. So here it is. Um, this is the color. It's sort of a satin finish, quite uh, flattering, and I think it's gonna look good in every skin tone. That's probably why they included it in the first place with every, as a point perk or maybe a birthday gift. So they gave it away to everybody, and I see why this will look good on most skin tones. I can't really think of a skin tone that will not be flattered by this color. It's sort of the snooty rosy brown very very natural looking color wonderful so easy to wear it's quite long wearing for a satin lip pencil it dries down into a bit of a stain on the lips so this one i've bought with my own money um and i will probably repurchase it once it's done because look how little i have left i should throw it into project pan because this is going to probably be used up quite soon so um to move it on out i probably will place it there um, next product is this oldie but goodie. I've had this uh, tube for maybe eight months or so and previously I had a tube identical to this one so this is my repurchase as well. So you, can, you can be, you can trust me that this is another firm favorite that will be bought by me once this runs out and this is a Chanel uh, Rouge Coco Shine lipstick in number 54 Boy. Quite a famous little number, it's in their permanent lineup, and here it is. It's on my lips right now, so you can see how it looks with my skin tone, and I think that's another very universally flattering rosy beige, um, kind of sheer. It's sort of sheer, it's glossy on the lips, easy to wear, very, very comfortable, very moisturizing. You can throw it on without uh, a mirror because it's just such an easy color. It's half transparent, therefore it's not going to um, create a mess on your lips. It's very easy to wear. It wears down in a couple of hours. Maybe it lasts, I would say, two hours, maybe three hours if you don't chat too much because the lipstick wears off from talking. But it's a lovely, lovely shade. And I think, again, universally flattering. I cannot think of anyone who this wouldn't look good on. Wonderful shade, and I recommend you check it out. Just like Rakugian from NARS. The last one is another universally flattering. You see this nudie trend I'm doing. That's what I've been doing with my lips pretty much all month. On a daily basis, I was wearing mostly nudes. Um, this one is a product that I recently reviewed, but I have been using for a month now. So this is not new per se to me. Um, although you've probably seen it in a very recent video because I haven't reviewed it before that. And I'm including it in the favorites because this is lovely. Um, comparable to MAC lip liners, comparable to Dior lip liners. So completely a high-end product to me in terms of texture, in terms of how it holds up. This is a Pixie by Petra lip contour liner in the color Natural Rose. Um, what a beautiful, beautiful shade. I also have a lipstick of this exact matching shade from Pixie and I'm going to wear it a bit longer to have a more firm opinion about the lipstick and we'll see if it makes it to favorites or not. But the lip liner is definitely a huge find and I do recommend that you check the, those out. I don't think they have a really nice color range. I think it's more mostly nude um, colors for different skin tones. They have maybe three choices, really limited color range, but this I think is very, very universally flattering and if you want a nude liner, sort of a rosy nude. This is the way to go. Um, the texture of this is remarkable. Here we are. This is the liner. You can see how just neutral it is and how easy to pull off it will be for most people I can think of from fair to quite dark skin tones. I think this is a very good color to go for. It's very pigmented. It's creamy, glides on nicely. It sets and doesn't really move very easily. You see, I'm trying to smudge it and it won't really smudge on my hand too much. It smudges a bit. 
it's comfortable enough because it's creamy but uh, it's also looking quite matte if you fill in the entire lip it doesn't travel it doesn't it's not creamy enough to create an issue where it's migrating it doesn't highlight dryness basically this is kind of the formula to beat for me this is pretty much a perfect formula for a lip liner very very comfortable and it does its job very very nicely Let's move on to some skincare items. First of all, for my manicures, I've been using the Sweet Lemon Body Whip with Cold Pressed Lemon Seed Oil from Italy by The Body Shop. This is a very classic body whip product. Uh, why do I use it for my manicures? I really like moisturizing my hands during uh, the process of giving myself a manicure and I find that really rich hand creams that don't sink in immediately will unfortunately create an issue uh, of greasy fingers, difficulties with the application of polish, etc, etc, even if you clean the nail beds afterwards. I'm just talking about it being slippery, you know, just your hands aren't as functional. This one is not an expensive product, uh, but it it smells fantastic, it smells like sweet lemon, just like advertised, and it absorbs into the hands very, very quickly. I wish they had this formula in a more travel-friendly format, but for me, whenever I'm doing my, uh, my uh, manicure, I have my, my manicure baggie, I'll show you maybe sometime what I have in it, and I have this right next to it. So every day, no matter what, I will do my manicure, or maybe every second day, depending, uh, and use this cream during the manicure so really lovely the smell is therapeutic almost makes me feel happy um, nice nice product really quickly uh, absorbed into the skin next I have a micellar water and this is shocking because I've been very faithful to my good old bioderma for many years and I wanted to try something else but something equally as effective and I have heard that this Garnier Skin Active Micellar Water um, is as effective as Bioderma. In fact, I can confirm that this is a good dupe. Very similar in its action as Bioderma. I would say that you need maybe a bit more soak time. It's a little bit harder to remove makeup with it. A slight tiny bit if I'm picky. Um, I still prefer Bioderma but um, the sort of price to um, quality ratio, it's better here because it does pretty much the same thing for half the cash, I think. Uh, the, there's no smell, it's easy to use. The, I do tend to use more of this one than I do of Bioderma. Bioderma is, to me, a bit more effective and, like I said, faster acting. So it's not perfect, but it's a good replacement. And why I'm mentioning it, I probably will go back to my Bioderma, but I'm mentioning it because it's a really lovely uh, budget alternative and, and it's worth it. Um, so money to effectiveness ratio is very good in this guy. Not quite up to par with Bioderma, but not far off really not far off. Um, I've been also using a day cream under my makeup that I was very very happy with this month and I have been using this Shiseido Ibuki multi-solution gel. Um, I have to say this cream also is quite hydrating. I have dry skin so I need the hydration. It absorbs into the skin within maybe five minutes and then you're ready to prep your skin further for makeup application. A bookie line is something that I haven't used before, so this is new to me and I really, really like the texture. I have to say, um, probably it works so well because it is this gel texture. It's water-based, that's why it's easily absorbed into the skin. You wait just a slight little bit, just a few minutes, and then you're ready to go. And any kind of uh, foundation that I've tried, water-based and silicone-based, had been playing quite nicely with it there hadn't been any pilling or issues with application or textural issues because it's pretty much gone as it, the, the moisture is in your skin after you apply. There's not much residue on top of your skin. So very happy with this for a, an under makeup sort of cream for daytime. Um, and also it's, you don't really need very much. You need very little 
Um, I actually had been using this for a full month. It's It's been full to the brim when I started, uh, to the point where it was kind of getting on, onto the lid, so it was full. This is how much I used in a month. It's really not that much. The last product that I wanted to mention is my trusty 8-hour cream by Elizabeth Arden. I've been using it like crazy this month. Um, mostly for my lips, for my dry cuticles sometimes as well. This is a miracle worker. This is the sort of a balmy, vaseline -y texture. Uh, it's lighter than Vaseline. It's not quite as thick. Um, you can wear it as lip gloss. You can uh, wear it as an overnight mask for the lips, which is what I do. You can wear it on dry patches on your skin. This is such a multi-purpose, life savior kind of product, and I've been using it for years. Um, you can see that I don't have very much left. It's basically on its last leg. Wonderful, wonderful treatment for dryness anywhere. That's it for today. Um, I hope you have a good day. See you guys later. Bye-bye.